Hi everybody, this is Taylor Young with Durham's Partnership for Children. I hope you guys are all doing well today. Um, today for this webinar, I am going to be sharing basically an overview of the teaching strategies, gold system, the online assessment system. And uh, I will go over in detail all of the five main areas, which are these that you see on your screen, teach, assess, develop, report, and family as well as this dashboard and kind of just going over all of the most important features that you're going to need to utilize this system. And I will likely go over some of the, the requirements that have changed for the school year as they pertain to um, TS Gold. So before I get started, I'd also just want to mention, please make sure that you use the Google form that will be sent to you after you viewed this webinar in order to both receive credit um, for watching the webinar, it'll be used for attendance purposes, as well as to submit any questions that you may have. And um, these questions are going to be answered during the live follow-up session that we'll have and uh, make sure that everybody has clarity regarding all these different features. So um, please, like I said, make sure that you, you use that Google form to submit um, attendance and questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to be sharing information on this page here, which is called the dashboard. So when you log into TS Gold, this is the page that you land on. And um, this is the page that you are going to um, start on to add your classroom. So in order to add your classroom, you're going go to go to this um, circle up here that should have your initials in it. And you're going to go to manage my files. So it should take you to this page here, and in this gray bar up here, you're gonna click on My Classes, and it will take you to this page here. Um, if you are a returning teacher, you will likely have your class on this page here. You'll see I have a couple of different classrooms uploaded, or created rather. Um, I do wanna just pause and mention that if you are a returning teacher and um, you have your previous year still active, you are going to need to communicate with your administrator and have them archive your previous year's classroom and children for you. Um, you are not going to want to delete that information, but you're going to archive it and just make sure that it's inactive. And that's just to make sure that, um, you know, when you are inputting information that it's all going in the correct classroom. It will also be helpful for monitoring purposes for both myself and for your administrators if there is only one active classroom. So in order to add that classroom, what you're going to do is over here on the left, you'll just click add class. You can name it whatever you'd like. Um, some teachers use you know, their names, so it could be like Miss Taylor and Miss Courtney's pre-K class. Some teachers like to do the year, whatever it may be, doesn't matter. Um, the most important piece at this step is to make sure that you are selecting pre-K four class slash grade or blue. The reason for that is this is going to um, populate all of the different uh, expectations, um, age appropriate activities, things of that nature. That This is kind of what determines that. Um, and blue is indicative of four-year-olds, so that is what you're going to select. And the pre-K-4 just means that that class is a class of students that are in their last, you know, that are in pre-K, that this is the last year they have in a preschool setting before they transition to kindergarten. So regardless really of what you're doing, you're going to make sure that you are clicking pre-K-4 and you'll hit save. And there you go. You've got your classroom. Um, so you'll see, like I mentioned before, I have a couple of different classrooms already created. So I am actually not going to be using this classroom that I just created. I'm going to be using a different one just for um, demonstrative purposes. So when you have, so I'm going to go back to my dashboard here. And you'll see here, this says 2019-2020 NC Pre-K. So when you have more than one classroom, it will allow you to kind of toggle between all of the different ones. So I'm gonna click on the class just to make sure that I'm editing things in the right classroom. So you'll see here, I'm in the 2020-2021 and see pre-K. So the next step is going to be adding child records, adding information for your children. 
So in order to do so, you're going to click the circle again, and you are going to click Manage, and it should have the name of your classroom. So this is where you should see your class list. If you have, you know, if you already have children in there, in order to add children, all you'll do is click Add Child here on the left. You're going to select your class. This should already pre-populate, but if it doesn't, make sure you're selecting Pre-K. Four, you're going to input the child's first day in the program, and then all of the basic information. Only the, um, the information portals with the asterisk are the ones that you have to complete. All the other ones you can leave blank. Um, so I will just use my mom's name as an example. So again, fairly simple. You just go through. You don't have to do anything here with the funding sources. I do want to address this area right here. The question was asking whether or not you want to assess a child using the Spanish language and literacy objectives. So there has been some confusion around this in the past, and I just want to um, clarify. The only time you would select yes is if you or your co-teacher, your assistant teacher, whomever, speaks Spanish reads, writes in Spanish, and communicate with this child, and can communicate with the child in Spanish. If you are not able to speak Spanish and you cannot communicate in Spanish, you don't have an adult who can do so, you're going to click no. Um, if the child does speak Spanish as their first language and they are an English language learner, you will have the option, and when you're completing the home language survey, to um, assess that child using the English acquisition English language acquisition objectives. And I'll go over that in a moment. But like I said, this will always be no unless you are able to communicate with that child in Spanish. So once you've gone through all this, you click save. And there you go. So now you'll see I have two children in here. Um, and you're going to want to complete the home language survey. I would recommend doing that as soon as you input the child, the sooner you do it, the better. And again, all this does is it determines whether or not you need to assess this child using the English language acquisition objectives. Um, so this is just going to require you to know what language the child and their family members use at home and what language a child uses when they talk with teachers and other children in the classroom. So this is helpful for English language learners. And of course, it's not limited to just Spanish. There are tons of languages that are options in here um, if they are not English speaking children or families. So I'm just going to go through this real quick. So it determined the average of my scores is one. So this child speaks only English, does not need um, the Spanish, the English language uh, acquisition objectives. So that is everything that you will need on the dashboard part of it.